Paul says that we should not exceed what is written. In other words, if the Bible doesn't say it, you want to avoid the temptation to come up with something that's not actually written in the scriptures, especially making some sort of hard teaching off of it. One thing that we see that's an example of this is when people say that Satan is or was the minister of music in heaven, as though there was a church service and there needed to be worship music. There is worship in heaven, but that he was the minister, he was the leader, he was in essence the choir director. Is that the case? One such passage where this comes from, where the genesis of this comes from, is in Ezekiel 20 and 13. Notice what it says. It says, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the ruby, the topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the lapis lazuli, the turquoise, and the emerald, and the gold, the workmanship of your settings and sockets was in you. Now, from that passage, we don't get a lot from that. Well, the reason for that is because it, that was looking at the NESB. Now, if we go to the King James Version, we look at it, we'll see what it states. It says that uh, and the workmanship of thy tabrets, or some versions may say thy timbrels, and of thy pipes was created in thee in the day that thou was created. So the question is, what does that really mean? Does that actually show that let's say he was a minister of music. Well, no. And by the way, the Hebrew word doesn't give any little benefit. Can it be referring to his voice that he could sing? Well, maybe. Fine. I have no problem with that being the case. I would imagine as an angel, he probably could sing well. I imagine that music would be would not be an issue for him. Just like I would not imagine it would be a problem for any other angel. Remember, they are created to serve God, and so they will also worship God as well. They are ministering spirits. And so in this case, can we glean from it that it's stating that this that the devil, Satan, was leading the other angelic hosts in worshiping in music? No. Now, by the way, God doesn't need anything else. The Bible says in Acts 17 that he is lacking nothing. He doesn't need anything else. He is God after all. But we also see that there is music still in heaven even after the devil has been put out. Notice what it says in Revelation 5, 8, he says, uh, and, and when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which were the prayers of the saints. Notice what it says in verse 9. And they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the book. So I won't go into it any, even further, but they are singing, they're worshiping, there's music and they're singing. They seem to be doing just fine without Satan. Now, the point is this. One, he was not the minister of music. The Bible didn't say so. And so if it doesn't say so, we probably ought not say so ourselves. But also, this is an example of what happens when you read into something, when you isolate something, or when you make it say more than what it says, exceeding from the scriptures. And so if someone were, at, were to have told you previously that Satan was the minister of music, and when you go to read Ezekiel 28, you might come away with that because it's been implanted in your mind, but the scriptures in no way say so. And so, yeah, he's not the minister of music. As a matter of fact, he's the minister of nothing as far as God, nor was he the minister of music, the choir director, uh, because the Bible didn't say so. If he was, the Bible didn't let us know. And so let's just avoid the temptation to make the passages or the scripture or any other doctrine teaching say something that's not found in the scripture. Amen.